Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Girish starting off the presentation. Before we actually get into the content, let me take you through the structure of the presentation. You just heard Lino introducing the two speakers and presenters. After that, we are going to set up some basic foundation share with you some basic information about manufacturing, then come into the relevance of 5S and explain the details and the elements of 5S, slowly leading into what is world class manufacturing, what does it constitute and then we have an open session, question and answer session. These are the two speakers, today's presenters. Mr. Naval Bunkar on the top and Girish is myself. Just to share with you about the SL Kirloskar Center for Executive Education. This is a pioneering, pioneering initiative of the Kirloskar group for furthering the betterment of manufacturing. This is a center set up for educating competence building of managers, working professionals in the industry. Of course, this is inspired by late Mr. Kirloskar, who most of us would know has been the dean of Indian manufacturing. The vision for SL Kirloskar Center for Executive Education, we will be an outstanding institution for executive education in the area of manufacturing, in the area of manufacturing excellence, in the area of manufacturing competitiveness. It will be a center of excellence, it will be a center of excellence committed to competency building of at individual level as well as at the organization level through initiatives called training consulting and holding and advisory services. The center is ideally located in Pune, far away from the city of Pune, but still within Pune and nicely ensconced amidst the western Ghats. This is how the center looks like. Each block is constructed like a modern day monastery and it is the architect of this whole center is the world renowned Mr. Beninga. These are some of the programs that have been conducted earlier, essentially all management development center programs for junior management, for middle management and senior management spanning across different subjects of interest to industry. Some of the recent programs are listed here for your information. Manufacturing Excellence, uh, Assessment Center, Middle Managers Development Program, Business Excellence Program. These are some of the flagship programs. And some of the programs which are coming up are young graduates course, again manufacturing excellence, new product development, supply chain management and also the last one you will see a new suit on breakthrough management and innovation. So all these are subjects of interest to the manufacturing industry. Some quick words of how to get the best out of this webinar. As you, are, as you are aware, you are muted by default by the organizer so that there are no background noises, echoes of the type. I am sure as the presentation proceeds you will have doubts. Our request is for you to please note them down. When the program ends, a question box will be opened out for your convenience. You can type in your questions. As far as the course material is concerned, is recorded 
and you can get access to this through CIA. With this few words of introduction, I hand over the presentation to my colleague, Mr. Naval Gunkar. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, I'm, I'm going to touch upon few basic concepts uh, because I thought uh, some basic terminologies we should have a common understanding and uh, probably it will help us understand the big picture of uh, 5S and world class manufacturing better. So there are few words which we commonly use, uh, each one of us use and let's uh, build some common understanding for these words. <clears throat> A uh, few definitions I have put in, the probably all of us know. First thing is uh, manufacturing. What, what manufacturing means, it converts our raw material uh, into finished products. It's a useful value added product. It's a simple definition. So there is a, a, a raw material which leads to a finished value added product. Next comes, I'm, I'm going to run through this quickly because more time we should uh, spend on the actual concepts for which we are here. Next is a, a with necessity for environmental protection, a concept of sustainable manufacturing uh, has emerged and this aims at conserving planet, people and profit. And so we, we have a definition of sustainable manufacturing. Then we also know about lean manufacturing. A lean manufacturing is what? It's the use of minimum and maximizing output. And that's that's what we talk about lean manufacturing. Lean is a approach that depends greatly on flexibility and workplace organization. So these are the, these are the three basic manufacture uh, uh, definitions related to word manufacturing. So let's define first is a manufacturing. I'm just recapping the slides. Then a sustainable manufacturing and lean manufacturing. Then comes the concept of work. Uh, anytime we interact with each other, we say I'm busy doing some work. What is that work? Now in industry and in physics, we see work in different contexts. In physics, the work is any force, whereas in industry, activity that a customer is ready to pay for is work. It's a simple definition. Let's see some pictures of what is work. I am designing a product, so it's a work. I am planning some work, it's a work. Uh, I am inspecting a product, it's a work. So. These pictures show different facets of our work life. Again, I am testing something, uh, it's a work. I am assembling something, it's a work. I am in a classroom training. So we are going through webinar, that's also work. I am in a meeting at the shop floor, so that's also a work. Sometimes we confuse between physical work which we do and mental work we, which we do. But actually in the real term we have both combination of uh, physical work as well as mental work which contributes to work. Let's now move to workplace. Are, are we all clear about work? Yes. So then let's move to workplace. Now workplace is nothing but a place where we all work. So maybe a small office where we work, it's a cubicle. Maybe a shop, uh, building of a factory, which is there on the extreme right side. Maybe a machine where we work. Uh, maybe in a corporate office where we work. So different places of work, we call it a workplace. So uh, we come back to uh, 4M, uh, where we are talking about men, machine, material, and method. So we will move to the next slide. So in a supplier and in your own factory, 
at customer at each location we have uh, four M's that is main machine machine material and method uh, if we look at the combined picture of uh, so uh, and so what we are looking at is uh, integrated approach of main machine and method the shaded portion which you can see is the actual work or actual product which we deliver to customer and uh, where there, there is a mention of K, K is an area which could be improved uh, for process capability or that's what we call as a scope for Kaizen. So if we, uh, if we, look, if we look at the shaded portion, so when we have uh, all the, these four elements together, we, the shaded portion is the actual work which we are talking about. Now let's move on uh, with this basic de some basic definitions. Uh, let, let's move on to some uh, journey on what is useful and what is not useful. Uh, in common man's language we say, uh, oh that was a waste of time and that was a waste of money and that was a waste of effort and uh, sometimes we see that even if we, if I had to put together all the time that I wasted in the last so many years, it's very difficult to find out. Same way uh, there is a cash on the floor which we say that it's a waste of money. So all this, um, yeah, here you can see about efforts. So all this together is something defined as a waste. So only thing is that uh, it's gone is gone. It doesn't come back to us. So West is something which we which is gone. It hasn't come back to us. It can't come back. So what is the definition of West? So West is something anything other than minimum amount of uh, manpower, time, equipment, material, parts, space. You can keep on adding, and uh, which doesn't add value to the product, which actually is not necessary for making a product. So if something which doesn't add value it's waste and uh, please let, let's keep this in mind and again this is uh, important it's not just for manufacturing place it's for an office uh, environment also it's for government also it's for hospital also it's for school also so whatever is not useful or which doesn't add value to the product or service is waste so this this is uh, what the background of waste is Let's look at some of the waste at a shop floor level. So I have put up some pictures and um, th these are from the factories which we see around uh, us. So you have scrap, uh, you have excess, you have defects, uh, you have a lot of unwanted material. Probably, yeah. Then we come to what is waste and daily work? Now, for any any anyone uh, who who has to uh, let's say I come to office and I do machine uh, I am operating in machine shop. I am a machine shop operator. So when I have a I'm working on a machine. So I do a network. Uh, I have to do some setup for the machine. I have to do some change of the tooling. I have to do cleaning of the tooling. I have to come to workplace also. All that is incidental work. When I say incidental, it is required to be done. I need to be in my machine shop at 8 o'clock. So I have to travel from home to machine shop. So that's the incidental work. I have to uh, set the job. I have to do cleaning of the machine. Again, that's the incidental work. So anything beyond this, where, which is not required for uh, uh, and for which like I keep on waiting for a material to come. I keep on uh, machining to happen. So all those are, I search for tools, I search for instruments. So all these activities which I mean customer is not willing to pay for, that's the uh, waste. So in daily work we have total work which comprises of three elements. There is a network, there is an incidental work and there is a waste. Now, if we do a survey, we did a survey and we found out that say about 10 to 15 percent of network, you have additional 15 to 20 percent of incidental work 
and balance everything is waste. So you can imagine what is the amount of uh, opportunities which all of us have for, and these are all non-value added. This customer doesn't pay for, so it eats up into our profits, it adds up to our costs. So just keep this in mind that uh, 10 to 15 percent of net work, 15 to 20 percent of uh, incidental work, and rest all is an opportunity for improvement. Let's not call it non-value in work, let's put it as an opportunity for improvement. So work, when we have work, we have value-added operations. And when we have value-added operations, we also have non-value-added operations. So inspection, tool change, maintenance, these are non-value-added operations. The, whereas value-added operations are actually when we are offering a product to a customer. And for non, each non-valued operation, we make a loss, whereas for each valued operation, we add to our profit. So this is in a simple nutshell, when we look at the time of a person or operator, you have, he is doing a valued work, he is doing a non-valued work, and he is doing a waste. We need to eliminate this waste and more, improve it further and further. So what we do to eliminate this waste and how do we uh, go to next level that let's look at some of the pictures of types of waste. There is a leakage, there is a spillage all over. In the factory you can see some of the pictures there. There are uh, oil spillover all over. You can see um, the metal to metal contact and this may result into some kind of uh, uh, scratches and it could be a quality issue. There could be material lying all over the floor and uh, this material, uh, lying material could result into some unsafe uh, conditions or it could be extra material which is not required by the customer. The shop floor is dirty so uh, then you can see some of the things very difficult way of working. You can improve productivity of a person rather than making him bend and do. You can improve it. There is a gentleman who is doing uh, work in a very dangerous manner. So uh, maybe we can look at some of the things which are uh, there to look at. So again, this is going to lead to a waste. I'll also add some of the conditions which are unsafe conditions and that also adds to our waste. And uh, I'm stressing more on the waste because th this is an opportunity which we should look at from our own standpoint and when we are on a journey of 5S and WCM, these are something, uh, very basic level ac actions which we need to look at. <laughs> we all know the, there is a seven West at workplace and Toyota production system uh, ingrained that um, into us uh, and I think all of us are uh, familiar with this. There is a overproduction, there is waiting, there is inventory, over processing and poor quality. Uh, what we had shown you before was an over and above these, these are something which we are lying around us and we, which we need to look at. So if I have to summarize the waste, where I can put a ladder chart like this. There is a very uh, basic level leakage, spillage kind of a things. That's a very basic level of waste. Then there are a few dirty, difficult, and dangerous things which are on the shop floor. Uh, I've shown you some pictures about that. And then there are some very un, uh, unsafe conditions on the shop floor which uh, looks at actuator, big car, so I mean, we can look at those more. And then we also, I mean, which are primarily, we are talking about seven ways uh, in terms of overproduction, waiting time, uh, over transport, over processing, inventory, over motion and defect. So if we, if I add up all these, it becomes a 20 point waste formula for moving on to us. So these are some of the ideas were there to look at uh, waste as a holistic way. 
and this approach is to do very simple things first uh, look at level 1 look at then level 2 and look at level 3 and maybe that will lead us to a next level of journey which is a 5 s journey uh, i will now uh, request my colleague girish to take you through a journey of 5 s So hello once again, uh, let me continue from where Mr. Nagul Gunkar left. Uh, he has laid a near perfect base for in general what is uh, what constitutes good manufacturing. You would have seen a, a gradual but certain build up on, on the two basic principles of what is waste vis-a-vis -vis what is value. How these two, how these two concepts interplay. <coughs> so then our next process or the next approach is if this is what is waste then how do we as as manufacturing managers or operation managers look at wastelessness yeah. if not wastelessness at least less waste so that brings us to our next slide Naval Gunkar talked about the seven wastes hmm? I, I would like to talk about the sacred seven the same we as a community of operational managers for us these are very very sacred P, Q, C, D, S and M and also E all of them stand for these particular parameters and constantly and always this is what our efforts are to bring betterment in these sacred seven. So how do we begin our journey of of this improvement if I may say so. All of us, most of us would be familiar with at least the terminology of 5S and to most of us 5S is a set of good practices. I might like to urge you to look at 5S not just as a set of practices it is much more than that it is a whole body of knowledge itself and the reason why we are starting this session on world-class manufacturing with this body of knowledge is for the simple reason that we consider this as a workplace philosophy. Of course, as it is, 5S has come to us from Japan, but those who are well read, they would see the connection to all these much, much more in our own old habits. The name 5S comes from five Japanese words, incidentally starting with S, and it is another coincidence that we have appropriate English translations which also start with us. That makes it life little better for us. Even in our Sanskrit and Hindi and Marathi, we do have these words which start with Sa. So what is 5S? It is a structured and disciplined, structured and disciplined method of organizing and operating the workplace. The two words organizing and operating are, are the show stealers because 5 s is not a method of improving. It is just a body of knowledge how you organize your workplace 
and how you operate in that organized workplace so that you can improve your work. And in an earlier reference, Naval Gunkar talked about it can be a factory, it can be an office, it can be a hotel, it can be a hospital, it can be a house, it can be the kitchen in the house and any workplace is appropriate for this. Therefore, the key statement is 5S is the founding block, basic block, the basic foundation for improvement. It is not improvement by itself. These are some of the slides that, some of the information that I will be sharing with you. They are, they are very mechanical and known to many of you, most of you, all of you. So I will still go through them for the sake of completeness. So on the left you have the five English, uh, Japanese words starting with S and on the right we have the English equivalents, again all of them starting in S. The five steps are as follows, a little more detailed version of the previous slide. The first S is about sorting, it is about segregating, it is about separating, it is about decluttering. All of us know when, when, we are, when we are thinking on something, if there are so many thoughts clouding our mind, you see our mind stops working. Similarly a workplace which is cluttered, which does not allow movement, simply work cannot take place. Why work? Even people cannot move if the place is very cluttered. So therefore, the first action or the first step in this philosophy is that please create a decluttered workplace. As I said, whether it is the factory or your office, a decluttered table, at least you must be able to know what papers are on your table. So first S is about making the place sorted out, separated, segregated, segregated from what? Distinguishing between what is required and what is not required. More of this we will see in another slide. The second is, is now that you have weeded out all the unwanted, unrequired, unneeded things, now what do we do with those needed things? Even if these needed things are disorganized, unorganized, again work becomes difficult. Therefore, the second S is about setting in order those things that are required. So it says arrange items that are needed so that they are ready, they are easy to use. More about this as, as we go to the next slide. The third is having, having handled what you don't need and what you need and having set some order to those things that you need, what do you do next? The next basic activity is to keep everything clean. Cleanliness, hygiene. Hygiene is as important as in our daily life as in our physical life, as it is in our work life. So shine is, is a metaphor, if I can use that word, to, to sanitize, another word with S, to sanitize, to make the place hygienic. So clean the workplace and equipment on a regular basis and why it is to be done, we will see it in a later, in a later slide. So these are the first, second and the third S. No, I, I, I am taking a small pause here, only to suggest, only to drive the message that the fourth S and the fifth S, they are not actions by themselves, in the sense the fourth S 
and the fifth S apply to the first S, second S and third S. That means standardize how to sort, standardize how to set in order, standardize how to shine. Okay, so similarly sustain, sustain applies to the above four, sustain what you have sorted, sustain what you have set in order, sustain what you have shined and sustain what you have standardized. For those who are familiar with the PDCA principle, will very easily see the complete spiral of PDCA in this 5S. That is what the Japanese body of knowledge, whatever they touch, there will be a PDCA undercurrent in that. So this is to take you through at a, at a bird's eye level, at a philosophical level, what is 5S. With this, we feel we are ready to discuss some, some little bit of details on each of these. One is, I said earlier, it's about sorting, it's about segregating, it is about separating. I talked about decluttering and any cluttered workplace is hard to work. I am sure in, in many of our workplaces, yeah, it's it's not just the work items which come in the way. Yeah, half the area is is occupied by unwanted storage items. And they make the life so difficult for our movement and free access. And therefore, what is the purpose of one is the core purpose of one is is to recover whatever unwanted space that we are using, okay? Because all of us know wherever it is, space is a very precious commodity. It's a very precious resource. So one way is to keep on adding space. Another intelligent way is to keep on recovering space from whatever space you have. And I'm sure it doesn't need great mathematics to tell us that how with by recovering space, by making the workplace efficient, our profitability and our efficiency will improve. How do we do this? How do we do this decluttering? Very simple. Okay, very simple. In a workplace, every person asks, basic questions, is this required, is this required now, is this required more frequently, if the answer to the above two questions is yes, then do we need so much of this now? The answer to this, whatever is no, just move it out from the workplace, declutter the workplace, the workplace is not the place to store unwanted items. There is a name given to this activity called red tag activity. For want of time, we will discuss this on a later opportunity. We move to the second is, it is, I said, organize, set in order, okay, the Japanese words do not mean much, set in order. And what is the meaning of setting in order? Setting in order is about engineering workplace design. It is about designing a model workplace. It is not just about bringing some shelf and dumping all the items there. It is about designing the workplace where needed items are arranged and not only arranged, they are also visualized. Labeling is just a word. So there are two elements to it. One is set in order means arrange. Set in order also means 
make sure it looks arranged okay at the end of the day it is ordinary human beings normal human beings who are going to work on the shop we must make their life easier designing a model workplace where needed items are arranged and labeled such that they are easy to use and any one can locate them any one can locate them so many of you would have heard visual workplace it is to us what makes the workplace predominantly visual why do we need the second is why do we need the second is single objective it is to reduce search time it is to reduce search time you see while we are doing our daily work let me also bring in another concept called daily work management when we do daily work daily work should be stable it should be automated almost automated without any great effort daily work should continue but if in the course of daily work we have to search where the product is where the tool is where the lubricant is where the hand glove is where the switch of the machine is when daily work is completely disrupted this is not the good sign of a good factory or a good workplace if in the kitchen you have to make your morning coffee okay and you have to search where the sugar is where the milk is where the coffee powder is finished you are 10 minutes only on searching you have lost precious 10 minutes of the morning in searching so reducing search time two ways is a vital element to reduce search time of those things which you need daily okay very important of those things that you need daily that you need regularly there should be no such time so seta helps in that this is one of those one of those games that people play play or trainers make the people play to to drive this message of orderliness okay this is such an array of numbers okay there are many numbers less than 50 more than 50 but in the range of 1 to 50 3 are missing so please find out okay now obviously it's it's one hell of a difficult job i mean it doesn't need a great intelligence to answer that question if these same numbers are organized like this and they are made visual like this then what is missing becomes quite obvious so this is only a only a method of explaining the the power of orderliness okay i am sure all of us all of us without exception must be facing the disorderliness in our homes in our workplace everywhere so how do we do this there are there are two steps many of you would have heard the word uh, heard the catch phrase you know everything has a place and everything in its place okay but you ask many people when they say what is this they will say everything in its place that's too small job more important is have you designated a place for that otherwise where will people come keep so everything has a place that is designate that place not only designate but also make it visual and having done that please make sure that things are in their place that brings us to the third is shine speak and span clean okay clean is not not just physical cleaning keeping the workplace and everything in the workplace speak and span okay keeping the workplace and everything in the workplace for example machine drawers work pieces everything and what is the why we do this third is again there is a purpose behind it it is to enable seeing 
if you can't see you, you can't even inspect because under the under the dust, under the oil, under the chips is hidden dangerous problems. So cleaning is cleaning facilitates early warning. They give early warning indicators of a looming problem or a looming failure. So that is the reason why 3S is important. That takes us to 4S, the fourth S. As I said, fourth S and the fifth S are explanations of how to do 1S, 2S and 3S. So 4S talks about setting the norms, setting the standards. When you say clean, clean means what? How much clean is clean? And how do you clean? If that is the level of cleanliness required, how do you clean? So that's what we see, set the norms, that means how much, and set the standard, how to, for 1S, 2S and 3S. So in other words, we call this making ground rules. You know? We make ground rules for doing 1S, 2S and 3S. Why do we need this standards? Obviously, consistent yardstick and method so that it doesn't slip back, different people can do it in the same way, etc. And that brings us to the last of the five S's that is sustain, keep steady, keep stable. So sustain what is created by making a habit of 1S, 2S, 3S and 4S. What happens? If all this we do, what happens? If you remember when we started this session on 5S, we said there are many things which are not good. So we this is 5S is a fundamental. Okay? So now I am closing that loop by saying if we do, if we have a basic culture of 5S, then all these apples yeah, are ready for us. We will be able to improve, we will be able to, I am not saying productivity will improve, okay? We will be able to improve productivity, we will be able to do quality assurance, we will be able to have a satisfied job, we will be able to have a happy workplace and so on. So 5S is an enabler for all these apples. How do we do this? Training repeated training, involving all the people of the workplace, periodic revisits, audits, you see anything in life has a natural tendency to deteriorate. Therefore, you need to revisit, you to audit. Then you create events, you celebrate, you recognize doing good job. These are the ways by which you can Summarizing, therefore, in one visual, all that we spoke, for example, S, first S sort, you see the three, three boxes there, one is stuff we use a lot, that means we need every day, we need frequently, so keep it close to you. There are some things which we use someday, yeah? keep it at some distance and there are some things we can never use yeah why are they at the workplace at all dump them so this is one is in one picture two is orderly keep things orderly keep things visible so easily retrievable easily accessible no such time third s is about shining cleaning and inspecting look at that gentleman inspecting Okay, don't don't miss that out. Inspecting is the purpose of shining. Fourth S is about standardization, documenting the rules, and fifth S is ha saying, is this the heaven? Did I by mistake come to a heaven on earth? He says no, it's a well 
or a Ford plant. I don't know why it's Ford plant. It can be our plant as well. Conclusion. With fibers in place, what do we do? What what messages are we sending? Okay. With fibers in place, we signal our commitment to begin an improvement journey. I want to highlight once again my parting parting words on the subject. Five years is itself not an improvement journey. It might improve many things, but it is a preliminary step to beginning our improvement journey. But however, we make our commitment known to start the improvement journey. Second, the workplace has become visual. Things are seen. Abnormalities are seen. What is normal is also seen. If abnormalities are easily visible, they 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 seek for action immediately. Third, the workplace ecosystem, when I use the word ecosystem, I say no, not just the physical place, everything in that workplace, including the people, have become sanitized to launch an improvement journey. And thus, we can conclude in a way that organization is now ready for its WCM pursuit. So this is how I, I my small whirlwind tour on 5S. I started with like a relay race. I started with where Naval Gunkar left. And like a relay race, I am passing the baton to him to continue on what is the w, world's WCM pursuit. Thank you very much. Thank you, Girish. Yeah, it was a great summary of uh, uh, the 5S, and I think he walked us through a, a, a very short span of time uh, each and every concept of uh, what, how we could do about 5S. So, as an organization, uh, again, 5S is not a journey. It's a beginning for what we call as a world-class manufacturing pursuit. So what we could do is, let's look at the three words, world-class manufacturing. Uh, in the beginning itself, we uh, went through a definition of manufacturing. Now we'll look at what is world-class manufacturing. Uh, see, there are a couple of challenges on manufacturing. One is customer centric manufacturing and other is a sustainable manufacturing and both are equally important when i say customer centric manufacturing uh, it talks about manufacturing to meet customer expectations and when i say sustainable manufacturing we talk about manufacturing uh, linked to uh, the need for environment so what we'll do is Let's look at customer-centric manufacturing. We're talking about customer is looking for a delivery, customer is looking for a lot size, customer is looking for a price or a cost, customer is looking for a particular expectation on quality. So all these are, so you have a requirement from customer and you are meeting that need for customer-centric manufacturing. Whereas when you look at a sustainable manufacturing, you're looking at lean, clean, and green manufacturing. When I say lean, clean, and green, it talks about the minimum usage of uh, energy and other resources, minimum resource, optimum usage of uh, manpower and other resources, and all these lead to what we call as triple P, the planet, people and profit. So we maximize profit, but at the same time we conserve planet and we also develop people. So that's what we mean by sustainable manufacturing. So uh, for a, uh, uh, for people like you and me, we have to look at both customer-centric manufacturing and we have to also look at what we call as a sustainable manufacturing. 
with both these things together we now let's look at world class manufacturing actually frankly world class manufacturing it's a process driven approach it's not something very different uh, it has various techniques and philosophy and uh, a combination of uh, philosophies and that take us to uh, next level and uh, so it's a collection of some concepts and uh, there are various approaches available in world class manufacturing we are going to show some a few charts on that but uh, it's a collection of concepts and it sets some certain standard for production and manufacturing for uh, organization to follow let's look at what are the principles of world class manufacturing uh, world class manufacturing itself is a top driven approach it, it uh, cannot generate at a bottom level it starts with a commitment of uh, top management it needs the blessings consent approval and total involvement of uh, top management commitment it also requires involvement intent involvement of people all across it can't be just uh, a top driven approach you need to have people down below you need to have all layers and levels uh, physically and <laughs> mentally into it and unless and until they are involved it cannot so it's a widespread contribution of the, all those who work at the company it cannot be a project driven by a consultant it has to be a project owned by people who are working within the organization because the fruits they are actually going to work on most importantly it's a way of working we are not talking about uh, one time i achieved world class manufacturing my factory is now best as uh, girish also said 5s can't be a one time activity 5s is a journey 5 5s and if you look at uh, the fifth s sustain it talks about the way we uh, it's a living methodology it's a way of working it's uh, so world class manufacturing is not a project activity i accomplished something and i achieved thing called world class manufacturing so uh, you need a commitment from top you need involvement of all and it's a way of working the methods tools standards they are practically available and all of us know most of us know about various tools and techniques but the application of these is very important and these applications applicable to our industry whether we are in a mass manufacturing or we are in a small lot manufacturing or we are uh, maybe a hospital or a bank because those are also uh, places of manufacturing uh, i i was uh, interacting with a, a hospital in bangalore uh, which is based on uh, japanese way of uh, hospital and I'm, 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 I'm i was pleasantly surprised to see uh, the concepts of uh, world class hospital management being implemented in the hospital and uh, so again so whether I, you look at a manufacturing place or a hospital you need to look at this now effectiveness of world class manufacturing comes in when it's a very simple thing easy to understand and uh, and it's visible we looked at even the 5s the first test is to make it visible so so as a facet for a, from a world class uh, manufacturing we have to have a very simple process we have to have a system which is visible and transparent across the organization we can't say uh, uh, it's a non transparent it has to have a transparent system so these are some of the principles which we need to look at before going in for implementing world class manufacturing now i come to see there are various frameworks available on world class manufacturing and uh, uh, you can ref, uh, on google uh, you can find lots and lots the companies in europe uh, usa and japan they've done excellent work even in india a lot of companies have done work 
and I am trying to build a common theme across the uh, various WCM frameworks available. And if you look at the foundation part is organization of workplace called 5S. So the whole foundation of this building a, a journey of world class manufacturing uh, that that foundation rests on 5S. So what Girish said about 1S, 2S, 3S, 4S, 5S that that's the the foundation for the world class manufacturing. And the three there are three pillars. One is a TPM, second is a just in time, and third is a TQM. Uh, various tools which are available they are laid out in uh, the boxes below those three. So maybe what I'm saying is that the foundation is 5S. You look at those three or four pillars. A few models also have total employee involvement also as a one of the fourth pillar, and uh, it builds up a framework for WCM. I'm just uh, taking a pause just to uh, time to digest the slide because it's a little busy slide. <coughs> You can look at uh, Kanban system, you can look at level production, mixed production, you can look at uh, standardized work, so cycle time control, uh, flow production and let me tell you all these concepts are applicable to mass manufacturing as well as a small volume production. It's not a tool to be deployed only for mass manufacturing. Many a times we see this, uh, maybe we hear this feedback that these have been uh, evolved around auto companies. Yes, auto companies since they uh, have a very intense competition, and especially uh, they operate in global markets. They have to look at their own cost structure and maximizing profits, and they have to also look at uh, delivery as a key essence. Uh, but yes, these are applicable to small lot production as well. So again, the WCM, the for so organization of workplace is a foundation, and uh, the three pillars are TPM, just in time, and TQM. Uh, some charts to talk about some of the principles. Uh, we all know about just-in-time principles and uh, again uh, you look at my, uh, our previous charts of uh, West, you look at our previous charts of 5S, many of those things, uh, I mean these are the very starting points you can look at. It. So like uh, simplification, cleanliness and organization, Visibility, you need to have a visually managed factory or you need to have a visual control over the factory. Value added and non-value added, we touched upon this in the beginning. The So cycle time reduction can happen if we reduce non-value added time. Then build a agility, agility build up is to uh, through reduce setup time and small lot production batches and move to agile workforce, reduce varieties and reduce or remove measurement and inspection. So some of the principles which we one can look at under JIT are if you look at uh, some of the barriers which could hamper the JIT one of the key thing is uh, attitude of people towards change and uh, there is a famous thing that hum angrezon ke zamane ke jailer hai that means we have been doing this work for the last so many years in this way suddenly someone comes up and says no it can be done in a half the time no the acceptance of this fact that it can be improved itself is a barrier to a change uh, but we have to always work with the organization, we have to help them, take them through to look at. So second part is the time commitment, 
commitment of people for change. There is a constant flow of production going on. So if I had to change my line or if I had to do some layout changes, I need to put up a time commitment. I, that production will stop for a half a day or one day and then still I will change the third is a commitment to quality. Quality, when I say it's not a product quality, quality of output which we are going to, we will not deliver, I mean, we will not deliver or compromise on the quality which we are, are delivering. So there are no shortcuts into it. And last and uh, uh, most important is reducing variations and bringing a stability to production system. I touch upon this in my couple of next charts. On a similar note, there are uh, the other concept is on TQM. So here the basic tenets is on customer satisfaction through total quality and uh, it gets achieved through customer focus, continuous improvement and people involvement. I'll a little bit pause here for TPM. Uh, most of you, most of us have gone through this and total, when I say TPM, again it involves office TPM also, it involves education and training also. So again, but again re repeating the same thing, this all is not for only manufacturing, it goes beyond that also. We at Kiloskar Group, we have also evolved our framework for world-class manufacturing. Uh, within the group, the, the factories are located right across Hospet, Kolhapur, uh, Pune, uh, Bangalore. So we have evolved our own uh, 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 framework for world-class manufacturing, where there are four principles or four tenets, waste elimination, standard practices, continual improvement and human development. And these are the four principles on which the entire manufacturing excellence model is evolved. And this is deployed in three stages. So first phase is visibility, bring visibility to our factories, let customers see our factories. Let our own people know what's going on in our factories. So we call it a first V called visibility. It's a 20 point waste uh, elimination program, uh, which we talked about in the beginning. And there is a very systematized process for uh, viewpoint identification, organized workplace, so and uh, small improvement activities. It also helps us to involve the people at the shop floor level getting into it. So first V is visibility. This also has helped us for people engagement. In fact, uh, all, all the including operators, supervisors, managers and leaders, they get involved in visibility phase. We go through this for a training, structured training. We handhold with small, small projects. There are uh, champions across the company who guides them for the, doing these projects. Projects goes through the reviews. So there is a perfect PDCA cycle which goes in for change. change. The second V is installs vital processes. When I say vital processes, there are some standard practices which we need to look at on 4M and floor management processes. Through value stream mapping, we actually map, not only map, we see that the Kaizen opportunities are identified. It also helps us on production smoothening. So some of the vital processes which get laid out in our factories. And the third V is measurement. We create a vibrant organization. When we say vibrant organization, we keep measuring our output in terms of quality, productivity, delivery, cost, human development and EHS. And when we start measurement of this uh, process, people and more importantly, we keep uh, celebrating this. 
we recognize people for their performance and plant performance at a vibrant as a vibrant organization it helps us to keep on improving again and again further furthering the quality of output so the entire WCF framework what we have deployed is visibility in the first part vital process in the second part and third part is a vibrant organization So the projects which came up, uh, we uh, we use some of the tools, and just to share with you uh, what we've done. The, on the vertical side, there are functions involved like production department, manufacturing engineering, quality assurance, plant engineering, production planning, control, purchase, R&D, and then there are areas of focus uh, like workplace organization, setup time reduction. And you can see there is a, a circle and a dot. So where there is a circle, it's a high involvement required. Where the dot, there's a medium involvement required. So it had helped us to identify cross-functional teams for different projects uh, for implementing this WCM. Again, mind you, this is not a one-time project. It's a process. It's a learning process it's a very involved and intense process so with this uh, we have gone through some concepts of uh, basic definition of our uh, uh, manufacturing we have also gone through understanding of work workplace and forum we have also gone through understanding of what is west uh, we went through a small module on the 5s and we had touched upon some brief uh, learnings about wcm or world class manufacturing all this again i'm repeating is for customer centric manufacturing and sustainable manufacturing and that's where we uh, we, we are for. So the session is open for any questions. Girish and I will be happy to answer any doubts, questions. In case